I will talk about the uh, application of uh, a BERT, uh, 3D BERT radar. And uh, I first would like to start with a short introduction. Uh, I work at the Bureau Wadenburg, um, which is an ecological consultancy founded in 1979. And in the last uh, four decades, we have grown to one of the larger ecological consultancies in Europe. Um, we've been working for quite a long time on uh, wind and wildlife interactions, uh, trying to use uh, different state-of-the-art techniques, such as uh, radar, where I'm talking about today. So the Netherlands are uh, on a key position um, located at the East Atlantic uh, Flyway. And especially the Wadden Sea is uh, world famous for uh, being a very important stop oversight for uh, migrating birds. And I, um, so every year we have a huge uh, um, uh, numbers of birds migrating through the Netherlands. And our study uh, location, uh, Eemshaven, if I, just something went wrong with my, sorry my presentation just hang on in there here we go so uh, Ames Haven, our study location is uh, located uh, at the edge of the the Wadden sea and each uh, spring and autumn we have uh, large numbers also of small passerine uh, birds coming in from for example in autumn from scandinavia and the Amesaven area itself is, is an industrial harbor area um, with, uh, which accommodates uh, about 100 turbines. And in the near future, another 100 turbines are foreseen in the blue shaded areas. So you can imagine that the combination of many wind turbines and many migrating birds will lead to large numbers of collision victims. So um, a recent study, for example, showed that um, each year, on average, about 33 birds are being killed by each turbine. And half of these uh, collision victims are made up by uh, songbirds. This is one of the reasons that the Dutch government uh, would like to reduce the collision mortality in this uh, particular wind farm. And one way to do that is to shut down wind turbines in periods of high collision risk. However, if you would shut down a whole uh, wind farm of 100 turbines, you would get uh, problems with the electricity grid. So what we need is uh, a sort of predictive model that can tell us 48 hours uh, ahead if there is intense bird migration. And for this, uh, to develop uh, uh, this model, the Dutch government uh, asked a research consortium to look into uh, the feasibility of this. And the consortium was made up by three uh, partners, University of Amsterdam, Bureau Wadenburg, and Altenburg and Wiemega, which is an, uh, another ecological consultancy in the Netherlands. So we carried, this, uh, we carried out this project during two migration periods in autumn 2018 and spring 2019. And in these two migration seasons, Bureau Wadenburg was using a novel 3D bird radar to uh, study the local patterns of bird migration in Eemshaven. At the same time, the University of Amsterdam used the data of a, a weather radar positioned at the German island of Borkum, which is about 15 kilometers to the north. And Altenburg and Wiemega was carrying out uh, field counts of fatalities in the same period. So the University of Amsterdam uh, would like to use historical data of weather radars to develop the uh, predict prediction model for shutdown on demand. However, these weather radar data, uh, weather radars, they look over large distances of, of many tens of kilometers and sometimes also very high up in the air, up to four kilometers. But they can't look very well at, uh, at low altitude, so at rotor height. So to check whether the data of the weather radar can be used to predict strong migration at rotor height, 
we use the data of the 3D bird radar, which looks at lower altitudes. So the project also carried out uh, different other modules. Uh, for example, they tried to uh, compare estimated mortality as calculated by a collision rate model to the actual uh, mortality found in the field. Um, I won't go into detail now for these other modules, but I'll show you at the end where you can download all the reports. So during this presentation, I will stick to the uh, subject uh, in the red box. So we measured local migration intensity and flight behavior of birds using uh, an, an innovative 3D bird radar nicknamed MAX. And this radar is manufactured by a Dutch uh, company called Robin Radar Systems. Max was located in the western part of Eemshaven, as shown by the yellow star. And I'll try to show you a short video. I hope that will run. Yeah. Uh, so this is a short movie of the image that's being produced by the 3D bird radar during a night with intense bird migration. And the radar the automatically records the flight track of every bird within the reach and stores that uh, in, in a database. And the classification software automatically identifies the approximate size. And you can see, for example, the yellow trails that are small birds and the purple trails are flocks of birds. Um, and you can also see some orange and red uh, tracks, which are medium-sized and large-sized birds. birds. But species recognition is not possible with any radar. Um, so you need, still need field ecologists to add species information to the recorded tracks. So if we look at more detail to the tracks, you can see that at every second, uh, information is saved to the database on, for example, the flight speed, at the distance to the radar and the altitude. And this, this gives us uh, 3D information. So if we plot the 3D information uh, in, an, uh, for example, uh, in Google Earth, uh, we can now literally fly with the birds and we can study in, in great detail how birds move through a wind farm and if they avoid a wind farm or even an individual wind turbine. For this study, we were, however, uh, more interested in migration intensity and um, how this, how this uh, differed uh, through time. And this graph shows you the average migration intensity per night for the two studied periods. And we found there were quite some large differences between autumn and spring. So at the left-hand side, you see that in autumn, the migration is much more peaked than in spring, but also uh, the, the average and maximum traffic rate, um, here depicted as MTR, is also much more uh, intense in, in, uh, in autumn. And part of the explanation is that the, the presence of many more young birds in autumn, uh, of course, will uh, will uh, make this difference, but also that a lot of birds in, in spring might choose another route, might fly more directly to the north, and which means that they uh, are less following the coastline. Migration also appeared to occur at very low heights, which is quite uh, interesting because um, uh, almost 37% of the, the radar tracks actually uh, were of birds flying at rotor height. And this was the same both in autumn and in spring. So if we now compare um, the timelines that were measured with MAX as well as with the weather radar, we can see there is a, a very good fit of both lines. So both radars show that the timing of the migration is, is very similar. 
And this is uh, just uh, two weeks in, in autumn 2018, but it also applies if you look at the whole autumn. So the timing of peaks, uh, peak nights at rotor height measured by MAX matches very well with the timing of peak nights at a larger scale measured with the Borkum radar. And it is interesting to compare these uh, measurements with predictions made with another model called the FlySafe model. This is a model that has been developed 10 years ago for the Dutch Royal Air Force to predict intense bird migration at larger altitudes. The predictions of this model do not fit very well with the measured uh, um, intensities. And this is because uh, this model is developed for the whole of the Netherlands and it's difficult to use for a small area such as Eemshaven. And also the fly safe model is not very well capable to look at very low altitudes such as at rotor height. So now we get to a more difficult graph. Uh, in the right hand figure we try uh, to, to plot the cumulative migration in the whole autumn in 2018. And we, <clears throat> to do this, uh, for each night we have, um, for the whole season, we have arranged the nights from the strongest migration to the lowest migration. So the first night in the top left uh, graph, based on the max measurements, uh, has been plotted in this graph and shows that you already have 19% in the first night, the, the, the night with the most intense migration. Um, well, is, is there. Um, and because the, the, we did the same thing for the, both the Borkum as well as the fly safe model, and you can see that the measurements of the weather radar are very close to the max uh, data. And we expect that the max data is, uh, is closest to the actual migration because it looks at that altitude. So because the, the, the weather radar data and the max radar data are, are very close to each other, we can conclude that it is possible to build a predictive model using weather radar data. And this model will probably also uh, be better than using, for example, the existing FlySafe model, as you can see from those uh, lines. Um, so if we, for example, would want to do a shutdown uh, experiment, we could uh, say that if we want to have 70% uh, of the cumulative migration in one autumn uh, to pass safely through the wind farm, we need to shut down the turbines at 12 nights with based on the max data, about four, uh, 14 nights based on the weather uh, radar data, but 24 nights when we would use uh, the predictive model that already exists. And of course, you need to, uh, to realize that this is all only at this moment possible in retrospect. So we have done these measurements, now we can do this analysis. And the challenge of course is to be able to predict the moments with strong migration uh, 48 hours ahead. And at this moment we are not yet able to do that, but we have shown with this feasibility study that we can use historical weather radar data to do so. So I come to my conclusions. I um, showed you that the autumn migration in Eemshaven, probably in many parts of the Dutch uh, coast, is more intense in autumn than in spring. And very importantly, that lots of the birds fly actually at rotor height. And it is possible to develop a predictive model for passerine migration at rotor height using weather radar data. And of course, you need to know what triggers migration to use that kind of data. The future uh, in further research will focus uh, to develop the actual predictive model for bird migration in Eemshaven. And to use this model for mitigation purposes, we will have to decide what are the appropriate uh, thresholds to shut down the wind farm. Obviously, we could use uh, the predicted migration intensity at rotor height, 
but we also uh, want to look into uh, the possibility to take into account the production loss to minimize the economic impact of mitigation. Probably this would lead to uh, uh, more or longer moments of shutdown, but with a lower uh, resulting production loss. In the end, of course, there's a clear uh, wish to, uh, to expand the applicability of the model to other regions in the Netherlands, or preferably the whole country. So I have shown you quite a lot of uh, complicated graphs. Um, but luckily, we uh, have had someone um, who can uh, who put down the whole project in a, in a simple cartoon. So you can also stick to that. Or you can download all the reports from the website I show you on this slide. And finally, I would like to invite you uh, to the conference on wind and wind energy and wildlife impacts that we are going to organize in April 2022. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>